Question 21. Kevin Nordley asks, Are you going to make Artemis Spaceship Bridge Simulator videos, or was the previous live stream of it all we get? I wouldn't count on it from me, not without better gaming hardware. I can play games fine, I can play modern games in high detail fine, but the computer acts quite peculiar when I try to record. Which is partly re why I haven't recorded too much since February of this year, whenever I got this new computer. It was a gift. I mean, you know, but say, still. Uh, my borrowed Windows Vista clunker that I used temporarily after my Zeus broke last year handled fraps better than this machine does, and I still don't understand why. Not like I understand technology to be good with, but it just befuddles me. <laughs> you also wouldn't see me broadcasting into my own Twitch channel, at least not anytime soon, not without a serious upload bandwidth upgrade. Um, I, I very, uh, not very, Revocane actually uh, asked me about this, you know, because I've, I've wasted a lot of my time, like, <laughs> like, over 60 hours in the past two weeks, I uh, reinstalled Dungeon Defenders and just played so much. And he's like, is this something that you'll ever record? And I'm like, no. It's like private pleasure for me, and even even if I wanted to, I, I can't. Like, this computer, I can run it fine, beautifully, highest details. Can't record it. And it just... I don't know. I don't understand technology. <laughs> I don't need your help on trying to understand my recorders. It's just... It's a thing that exists. It is possible I may participate in another game of Artemis, though, considering how fun it was, and it might be an Extra Life 2013 thing. We'll see. <clears throat> I also decided during, like, that 10-15 minute break while I was waiting for Audacity to process the first MP3 that I would eat some corn chips, because I was like, well, I, I still have some dip left over, you know, it's Thanksgiving morning, it's my fucking birthday, I do whatever the goddamn want, I eat some corn chips. And some salsa, and because <laughs> I haven't learned over the past two and a half years that those little bits can get caught in my throat, and it'll be hard for me to communicate with you all. Oh no, no, professional at work here, guys. <laughs> God damn it. Question twenty-two. Uh, Creddy Dark asks, "What are some memorable experiences of your pen and paper gaming life?" Uh, I enjoyed Sinva, my uh, my magic marble uh, PC who worshipped Vecna. I had great fun semi-cooperating with a band of evil adventurers delving into the Underdark. I enjoyed Thardalindrum, a lich NPC who tricked an entire party by magic jarring himself into a noble son who then murdered the ruling king to become leader of an entire nation with the party not figuring that out until much, much later. <laughs> Lots of fun with Thardalindrum. Thar. Thardagrim. Uh, I enjoyed the differences between W-H-I-T-E Dragon and W-I-G-H-T Dragon. White and White Dragon. I enjoyed a level 1 wizard rolling 1d4 for his hit points at level 1 with no con modifier and getting a 1. <laughs> I enjoyed laughing at Spelljammer. Spacefaring Alithids! In space! <laughs> there was that. Alright. Question 23. Cobrag90 asks, What was, in your opinion, the most interesting and engaging RPG character you've created? PC-wise, I think that's Sinva, the intelligent magic marble who worshipped Vecna. NPC-wise, I think that's Thardalindrum, the ancient lich who tricked a party of player characters into installing it as leader of an entire nation. Both had deep storylines, captivating personalities, and they contributed to the entertainment of others. Of course, obviously, you know, Thardalindrum was uh, an NPC. I was controlling him, so he wasn't the one writing the story, but he was pretty clever and crafty, and he was a reoccurring villain that went a long time. Dead are awesome. I'm just saying, just throw that out there. I mean, if I could transform myself into a lich. I... Maybe I already am. And I'm just redefining what it means to be a lich. I'm casting Alter Self upon myself. Every time. <laughs> just like, oh, yeah, I look like some random corpulent human being. You guys haven't seen me for a while, actually. 
That's since the summer is the last time I showed myself off, so who knows? <laughs> there is that. There's also been some outside of like tabletop role playing games. There's been some other interesting characters I've made to Ulrich Tarif, Heinrich Bonson. Eh, I, I get some. I get some moments in there. Good times. Question twenty four. Uh, Mikael uh, Sinbro, Michael, Michael Sinbro, M I K A E L. It could be Mikael. I just read it normally as Michael. Uh, he asks, "Do you love to make these videos, or do you just do it to reduce the derpiness of the internet?" The former. Question twenty-five. Uh, Pillow Tap asks, "Will you ever record any Rome Total War? The barbarian mercenaries need a leader. Barbarian mercenaries. I won't say it's impossible, Chief, but I don't see myself having the passion to finish another campaign of Rome Total War." Mm. Excuse me. I like it, but I don't know whether I'll ever be in the mood for it again. Perhaps <coughs> corn chip. Mm. Perhaps one day. <laughs> I knew it. I, I knew it, and I did it anyway. Uh, I think that might actually be the definition of stupidity or insanity. I don't know. Hmm. Question twenty-six. Smoshy dude one asks, "Will you ever create another story to go along with your let's get on with it, like what you did for your first LP ever?" Probably not. Liberal Crime Squad was and still is special. It would take a lot for me to write another story, one that I actually liked. I don't much care for the one that I wrote, for the LCS narrative, because I was kind of flapping my wings in the middle of nowhere. The game really doesn't exactly lead itself well to a, a narrative style, but I tried. I tried, and sometimes your best just isn't good enough, but I did it anyway, and some people like that, and then, you know, it worked. I guess, was what it was. Still one of the most uh, viewed topics ever in the Curse of Sub Forum. Just saying, just throwing that out there. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's special, and it would take a, a lot for me to write another story. I guess I'd put on the Voltron Army if I did. Uh, <laughs> maybe it might actually entice people to go there. I suppose it depended on whether it was a game that had its own, like, forum somewhere, or what have you. Caves of Cut Story! Stilgar the Nomad with a recycling suit ventured out into, you know, the jungles one day and got lost. God damn it. Mm. Question 27. Three Man 7 5. Hey there. Asks Grimoth, would you be really intelligent or never mature psychology wise? Uh. I'm not 100% sure what you're going for. I'm, I'm going to go with the former. Yeah. I'm probably not 100% understanding that. Whatever. <laughs> Question 28. Butter Knife King asks, How many dice do you have? A whole bag full. More specifically, two to three dozen. I, I don't know the exact number. I don't, I don't feel asked to get up and grab my dice and count them all for you right now. Two to three dozen, that works. Question. Some are good dice, some are not so good dice. They, have, they are there being shunned. <laughs> Question 29. Martin Lucas Ward asks, Do you like Pokemon? I like Pokemon. Oh, Alright, excuse me. I freaking love Pokemon. Nope, I'm neutral towards Pokemon. Having not spent much time playing Pokemon games, and not really caring to. I, I didn't really own a Game Boy either. I wasn't the Game Boy guy. I, my family did at one point own a Virtual Boy. That was a fucking great design right there. Oh, how did they think that was a good idea? Well, gee, I don't know what I want to play. Let me... Let me just crane my neck into this little device with a tiny view screen. It was a cool novelty item. And then it really started to hurt. <laughs> my mom actually took that back and got a full refund off of that. We didn't own that long enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just, and of course it didn't like other games. I played Pokemon Snap a little bit. I thought that was entertaining for a little bit. It just, yeah. It's not like I dislike Pokemon. I just don't want to spend my time doing Pokemon-related things. Didn't watch the TV show. Pokemans, gotta catch them all. 
Uh, I, I really can't... I can't... I, I know the beat to it, but I actually can't recall the words, and someone actually had me do the damn title song for a... Almanac. Not Almanac had me do it for a, a soundbite thing earlier this year. I just... Unless it's trolling people in Super Smash Brothers with Jigglypuff, though, I I just stay away. It's not that I dislike it. If you like it, it doesn't bother me at all. It's like people who like uh, the My Little Pony stuff. I don't care. You, you want to be a brony or what have you? That's cool. Doesn't bother me. I have no feelings towards it. I don't. All right. Question thirty. Wilheim William <laughs> Wilheim Wilhelm um, W I L H I E M the second he he's made some uh, interesting little videos before of <laughs> of like silly sayings and what have you that I've done in the past very entertaining with his like grimo vision or what have you he asks which L G W I series was or is your favorite to share slash play that's like having a favorite baby you can't have a favorite baby. And if you do, you can never tell anyone else that. Word might get back to the other babies. Shh. Question 31. The Dorks Man asks, Who you gonna vote for? Go Snappa! We'll go, we'll go, we'll go with that. Question 32. <laughs> Sean Aldridge asks, Last month, or something like that, you did a few Civ 4 Let's Plays. Should you continue? Would you consider doing another multiplayer Civ 4 game? Because the last one was hilarious. Of course, referring to the, um, the Zara playthrough that I did, 1v4 versus Dewey Ocelot, Griffin God, Ping, and Mr. British Gamer, Axel. Um, I think that was a special thing, forged by four people thrust together in archipelago with dreams of rising against the almighty Grimoth. They feared me, as they should have, for the wrong, but for the wrong reasons. Were there to be another competitive game such as that, I wager I would be warrior rushed and clubbed to death. There aren't many people I'm acquainted with who are on my Civilization IV skill level, you know, like, who I actually like speak with and talk to and like internet friends with. But skill doesn't matter in Civ 4 PvP so much as luck. That's the primary reason why I don't recommend competitive Civ 4 multiplayer. I mean, it's like, whoever's closest to the medal, so that they can get out the the axes first, or, you know, the skirmishers if you're, if you're being a cheapskate and you're playing as the Mali. So, you know, LOL, skirmisher of four strength fucking camps on Southern and Fortifies, you're never getting his ass off in the fucking ancient era. You know, he fucking gets on that shit, it's game over, you know. Whoever, you know, builds the military units first and rushes forward, I mean, you have access to copper or horses and the other person doesn't, I mean, you get there first, it's game over. Because you're able to, uh, you're able to control what they can do. Control their resources like that, I... I don't recommend that, uh, play cooperatively, or at least don't directly play against one another. Be like, okay, we're on separate teams, we'll be on, like, different sides of the world, we're not gonna, you know, directly collude with each other as allies, but we're not gonna do anything against each other, either. And, you know, it can be competitive like that. Turn on permanent alliances and be like, we're gonna play until one of us can turn on a permanent alliance, and... If we're all still alive at the end, that's cool, and whoever's doing the best will be voted the victor, and then you all ally up and kill the AI. It works. Yeah, but just the, the Civ 4 PvP doesn't work out that well. I don't think so. Yeah. Question 33. Uh, Shaman490 uh, asks, What are the eventual plans of our dark necromantic overlord Grimoth for the world... Or his own smaller domain. <laughs> I'm not the overly dramatic villain, full of hubris, who explicitly details his machinations to the protagonist before placing them with an elaborately constructed yet easy to escape death trap. That's just not my style. You'll have to wait and see. Question 34 <laughs> Mr. Kavakis, uh, Gavakis, G A V A K I S, asks, 
will you continue getting on with it for more and more years to come, as in, like, 2020? I don't know the answer to that question. We human beings who, whose lives are so short and insignificant are prone to change and whim. <laughs> There's no telling whether I'll be alive tomorrow, let alone whether I'll still be interested in this hobby, or how this hobby itself will have changed at such a time. You know, Folks, you know, who, who live in my area, and I presume anyone who's actually well, going to be around to watch this video in time, you know, we measure our lives in dozens of years. And depending upon, you know, where you exactly live, you know, your life expectancy, your average one, I mean, some folks, the underdeveloped countries, it's still as if it were back before the Industrial Revolution. You're looking at mid-30s, early 40s, stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> to go from, like, the end of 2012 to, say, 2020, that's such a long time. There's, I have changed so much from those times. And they say, you know, those teenager years are full of hormones and everything. Now that you're a young adult, actually matured into a full adult now, you can make competent and coherent decisions and shit like that. It's, uh... I don't know. As a kid, I watched my brother and friends play games in front of me. With the tools we have at our disposal, we can now get that gameplay footage delivered to us. Who knows what will become of the Let's Play subculture one month from now, let alone years into the future. Question 35. Mega Donkey 30 asks, "Why is the sky blue?" Google it. Question 36. Casey Jards, uh, Hards, <laughs> Casey Hards, no, Hardes, Hard Jardes. Oh goddamn it! <laughs> asks, "What would you recommend as advice for board uh, RPing?" Like, uh, message board, post-by-post -post role playing. Huh. It's been a while since I've done any of that, and I admittedly did not like it as much as real-time role playing. Not live action, like, you know, dressed up and donned my robe and wizard and, you know, out there in the world. <laughs> like, something that's happening in the moment, like, through, like, a chat window, or, like, an IM, or, like, a chat room, or something. Uh, on one hand... With a forum, you have the time to flesh out how your character thinks and feels, how your character would respond to such and such, which you may lose if you're in real time, because you, uh, you know, you're in a hurry, you're wrapped up in some particulars, you're not fully grounding yourself within your character. Like, playing an 80-year-old dwarf and trying to imagine all of his thoughts and experiences and things he's gone into, you know, uh, it's why it's a big reason why I tend to stick to, uh, the human race and uh, things that I roleplay as. If there's like an option for like fantastical races or what have you, because that's what I know. You know, obviously I want to stick to the male gender too, because that's also what I know. I can speak better for that. Magic, you know, just have to be something I fucking imagine to begin with. <laughs> um, on the other hand, there's something a bit mechanical about those forum posts, as responses can be pretty slow to come by too. You know, you're not, like, immediately interacting with someone and getting their feedback. You might wait five minutes for someone to type a reply in a conversation window, but for a role-playing form, that can stretch out the days. I'd recommend, uh, as advice, uh, since you're asking for that, finding people who have similar attitudes to yours when it comes to the activity. If you're the frenetic type who makes short bursts of posts and constantly refreshes the forum, then getting involved with people who make just like one post a day won't do it for you. The opposite's also true. Use the luxury... Oh, oh excuse me. Mm. There we go. I think I, I think I got the sneeze out of uh, my system. Um, you, um, also, use the luxury afforded to you to constantly shape out how your character will respond to something and why. It's difficult to be someone else, mind and spirit, especially if such a setting involves things with which we're unfamiliar. Dwarves... Magic? Spacefaring elithids? We have to make it up as we go. Hope that helps. 
Question 37. La Camus. God damn you and you fucking people and your YouTube names that stretch out from all corners and their random hodgepodge of the things and other cultures and fantastical role-playing crap. I can't make sense out of it all. It's all your damn fault. You're confusing me. Uh, LC there. LC. <laughs> He asks, roughly how many hours would you estimate you have put into tabletop RPGs? Just tabletop RPGs? Ah, uh, thousands easily. I mean, I've been doing this since 1995. That was my brother's freshman year of high school. I was seven, going on eight at the time. That was when I was first introduced, when he was roughly around the time when he was first introduced. Of course, being seven going on eight, I, I didn't have as many coherent thoughts as I do now. 15,000 hours sounds reasonable. Reading the books, crafting campaigns, uh, designing PCs and NPCs, conjuring storylines, actually playing the damn sessions... I mean, you, you might think it sounds like a lot, but let's assume here. This would be a generous assumption, because my sessions surely have gone longer than this. But let's assume every session lasts four hours, and you play once a week, every year, for 17 years. That's over 3,500 hours. Now, double that. Factoring in all of the time you'll spend reading the rule books, keeping track of your characters, leveling them up, thinking of their histories, over 7,000 hours. Now double that! Factoring in all the time I've spent as the DM slash GM, overseeing everything. I'm in the shower, washing my hair, I'm at school during a boring class, you know, I'm walking somewhere, you know, trying to get through something tedious at work, you know, uh, overseeing everything, all the minor nuances, the potential timeline of events, overthinking things, underthinking things, it's the growing and learning process. I mean, what the fuck do I know about DMing when I'm goddamn 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old compared to what I know now, shit. <laughs> uh, you know, sifting through all of the potential rules, trying to learn and memorize everything, you know, getting the money to buy the books, and, and, and while we're at it, let's throw in all of the other systems I've dabbled in and tried out. Because that's just assuming that you're working with one system that entire time, maybe. Uh, you know, you do like D&D, &D, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, then Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition, then Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, Warhammer 4 and Fantasy Roleplay, uh, Dark Heresy, you know, then you go into something like uh, Rifts, Palladium, Paranoia, Vampire the Masquerade, Shadowrun, yeah. There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> 15,000 hours? I think that's a good number. Okay. Question number 38. <coughs> Don't die, Grimoth. Um, Dylan522P asks... We know that you are a history nut. And I think you even went to South Carolina, fucking Cox, for college. So my question is, what is your favorite period of history? First, go Gamecocks! Though to be fair, to be fair, <laughs> Georgia, as it did last year, somehow manipulated itself into being the leader of the SEC East because they took care of Florida. <sighs> You bastards! <laughs> you know, last year we got crushed by the West, and that's what ruined our uh, conference schedule. In Georgia there, it only has one loss, and that was to South Carolina. You know, it's, it's running fine and pretty. And it gets to go to the SEC Championship again, despite a huge... What it was, like a 35-7? to 7? 
you know, game. <laughs> it's South Carolina, but they handled their business and did everything else, and they rightly deserved to be in the SEC Championship, and they may very well get to play for the National Championship, which, all things considered, is pretty impressive, although they have to survive Georgia Tech if they want to keep their standings in the BCS. Um, but still, go Gamecocks. Hope your ass. <laughs> what is my favorite period of history? Germany. Years 1919 to 1945. I'm partial to ancient civilizations, of course, and I have a sentimental attachment towards G.K. and the Mongol Horde, which I imagine not everyone shares, given how he was a ruthless conqueror and all, but I've put considerable focus and my energy um, into researching Germany post-World War I, or the First World War, the Great War. You know, it's stuff that I've written papers about, stuff that I've just focused my free time on doing. And it just, it was my favorite era. Uh, peers of mine in school were <laughs> a bit unnerved by me, in part because of how many books I carried around. This actually started in middle school. Um, I think I might have mentioned this before last year, and I, I talked about it before. You know, so many kids have to deal with teasing and bullying as they grow up, and uh, I was no exception. You know, kids like to pick on each other all the time, especially someone who uh, becomes an outcast or grows distant from the group, you know, not 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 with the norms, and I was certainly a quirky kid. Yeah, and uh, something that I, I started to cultivate was an aura which would strike, uh, not not exactly necessarily fear, but uh, to unnerve people, you know, I guess from the Hey Arnold episode there, where Harold wants to beat up Arnold, but Arnold, you know, acts crazy, and Harold's like, you know, you don't want to pick up the crazy person. You know, that, that's just it, you know, someone who's a little bit off-kilter, and me being peculiar and off-kilter to begin with certainly helps. But, uh, stuff like that, where um, <laughs> uh, peers of mine would be unnerved, you know, like, oh, I gotta pull out my fucking geometry book? Hold on, let me just take all these damn books out there sitting at the top of my book bag, and I really didn't use lockers back in the day. I didn't, personally. It's just like, eh, whatever, it's bother. I'm strong enough. I'm a big enough guy. I'm over six feet tall. I'll fucking carry the books with me. Pull out my geometry book and put all the Nazi books back in. <laughs> you know, all these books detailing the fall of the Weimar Republic and the rise of National Socialism. I, I admittedly cultivated my peculiar art through other means, whether it's the jaded, bitter, sarcastic asshole, the fact that I got into fights, that I wouldn't back down from a challenge. You know, shit like that, where it's the point where, you know, I'm such an intelligent student, I achieve, I overachieve, and I ride short, purely on talent. You actually want to fuck with me, by all means, you will fuck with me, and I will fuck with you back, and we'll throw down together. You'll get a referral, and I won't, because I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> and for whatever reason, schools are unfair, and they see my track record, and like, he's such a good kid, they're not going to give me one. Na -na 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 -boo -boo. So there's that. It's just, you know, it was, at that point, you know, getting like 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, it's just like an accumulation of events that I would just like, you know, build up the fear. And of course, the swats because I might have doodled on my cover for my German book certainly didn't help either. <laughs> I just want to say, though, before we continue... Um, how does Mysterious Juju put this in his Panzer General videos? I'm not a Nazi. I was, and still am, fascinated by Adolf Hitler and how one nation could, through a collision of events, some of them incredibly disastrous, and which could have been helped easily, and if it's still how, how one nation could have come under his control. But I'm not a Nazi. I'm not even a neo-Nazi. Now, a neo-Confederate. <laughs> I know a few, given where I live in this country. But I'm not a Nazi. I just play one on TV. Grimoth, you're trying to... Okay, that was dumb. Alright, I just play one on TV. That was just me throwing that in there to be snide. Okay. I was trying. <laughs> to amuse myself, I guess. No, it just seemed, it just seemed funny enough for me. I don't care about whether you guys find him funny. I just care about whether I find myself funny. Fuck all of you. Ah, <sighs> there we go. And you can fuck me back too if you want. <laughs> Gay or incredibly erotic. What are the two? No in between. So yeah, I'm not a Nazi. All right, just 
uh, it's, that's a period of history, and I could, I could go on a lot about that, but I won't. I answered the question. I, I don't want to make this a controversial video. <laughs> no controversial bacon is here, damn it. We got, we got regular bacon, we got extra fatty bacon, bacon, yes. We got lean bacon, I got turkey bacon. It's Thanksgiving turkey day, whatever. And no controversial bacon. I just, I just play Nazi on TV. What does that even mean? I guess it means that I play Nazi on TV. I guess there was that one Rise of Hitler special that CBS had back whenever I was in high school. I've never seen that ever again. I thought it was pretty good. they just never shown that ever again, ever. And, uh, some, some other things, too. It was always, uh... Oh, goodness, now I'm starting to think about it. Ian McKellen played one in a movie. It was based off Stephen King, uh, Apt Pupil, I think? He did a pretty good job with that. Uh, of course, you know, there's always going to be differences between the, the stories and the movies. Uh, but I actually, I, I, I thought it was a cool twist there, what the movie threw in on its own. And just that peculiarity and the frightening aspect of uh, seeing Ian McKellen there. It was actually gave me goosebumps to see him there on the, the Nazi uniform and the uh, the salutes he was giving there when he was all pressed up. It's... <laughs> you see that stuff in black and white, and then you see it in color, and it's two different things. <laughs> because, you know, they didn't invent color in the world until... <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> why was the world in black and white? <laughs> uh, but I'm not a Nazi. All right. Question number 39. Mr. Marauderification asks, Grimmeth, what is your favorite genre, and what are some of your favorite games? Strategy is my favorite genre. As for some of my favorite games, all right, Grimmeth, this is kind of like a free association thing. First five games that come to mind, let's say them out loud, go. StarCraft, and its expansion, but a war. SimCity. In 2000, 3000 Unlimited, really loved that game back in the day. I used to like Doodle Cities when I was like first grade because I loved the game so much. It's the first game I ever bought with my own money, $34.95 from Walmart. Heroes of Might and Magic 2, I actually played that game online with friends, very fun. Played it in LAN with my brother as well, quite enjoyable. Uh, Shadowrun for the Sega Genesis. <laughs> brother and I actually convinced the um, the game store that we lost the copy because we couldn't buy it from them normally and we paid them the $20 so we could keep ours. And uh, Dungeon Defenders? Yeah. I've invested over 300 hours total in that game according to Steam. I like that game. It's an enjoyable one. So, there you go. Five games. And my favorite genre? Strategy. Question number 40. The Middle Newton asks... Will you be let's playing any more grand strategy games anytime soon? Well, according to my remaining games on the rewarding the rewarders list, no. I suppose it could happen though. After all, there are many other Romance of the Three Kingdoms games I have not recorded, and I could always delve into say Nobunaga's ambition. We'll see. Uh, question for the. If anyone is confused by that answer, then I will now take the opportunity to state that, uh, contrary to internet belief, Paradox Interactive did not, in fact, invent the grand strategy genre. Go play Rise and Decline of the Third Reich. <laughs> Amusing how it all comes back to Nazis. But I'm not a Nazi. That was your edification for the day. Go play Rise and Decline of the Third Reich. At your edification. Please do not squander it. Question 41. Yeah, Paradox Interactive Games are the only grand strategy. No, nope, nope, not yet. But the game you recommended is a board game, Rudy. <laughs> I don't know why that turned into Bill Cosby, why the Paradox Interactive fanatic sounds like a, a horrible impression of Bill Cosby with the hip and the hopping of the jello pudding, but it does. I apologize to everyone. <laughs> okay. Question 41. Blast Wave 2K asks, Have you ever got sucked into an MMO 
Which one? And tell us about it if you did. As someone who loves RPGs, of course I have in the past, seemed like a natural next step. I'm curious about what you think here. There was one. I've tried a few over the years. Asheron's Call, EverQuest, Warcraft. But the only one I really played was Dark Space. I love Dark Space. I, I played it intermittently between late 2003 and early 2008. I think the game came out in like 2001, and I would have played it more and sooner if I A, had a better computer, and B, wasn't broke. According to my old account, uh, I checked this one because I saw the question. I spent over a month and a half of time there, and that was back when the game was pay to play. Over two and a half years ago, like back in April 2010, uh, I think shortly thereafter, uh, shortly after the Voltron Army uh, came into commission, uh, Dark Space became free to play, and it's still around. There's a uh, micro micro transactions you can make, um, which will give you lots of in-game credits you can spend on things, but you don't have to do that. Um, it's the game's still around Dark Space. I don't know how it plays these days, so I, I can't give you specific details, but it might be worth looking, taking a look at it. You can, you can Google Dark Space. Dark Space. Compound word. Alright. Question number 42. Turdly22 A asks, What is your favorite NBA team? I, um, I don't have one. I casually watch basketball, but I'm not a fan. I I do think the strategy behind the sport is interesting, and uh, so a few games catch my eye, particularly during the playoffs when the drama is high. I'm a sucker for a great story. <laughs> OMG, that's amazing, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm just, you know... Because, you know, fans short for fanatic, and I'm not fanatical about it. Like, I I'm more of a fan of the National Football League, and I actually do have a team I really like. I, I didn't get into that stuff, though, until I went to college. And I was, you know, it just happened to be one day, like, okay, I'm going to be a fan of the NFL now. Let's pick a team. And I started to like, I literally like the Baltimore Ravens, you know. I like their color scheme, purple and black, because that should always be what you go for, the style. The team, and I, I like the, what they stood for in terms of, like their players. Like Ray Lewis is absolutely, he's an oddball, and the amount of passion and drive that he has just listening to him is absolutely fucking incredible. But the NBA, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have an attachment to anyone at all. I don't, I don't care. I'm neutral. I'm apathetic. So there you go. Question forty-three, Master Azra. Hey there, Azra. Uh, he asks. What is your favorite D and D alignment? None of them. Dungeons and Dragons, the entire series, from the Red Box to, I guess I don't really know anything uh, much of anything about D and D next, so I can't speak one hundred percent for it. But uh, entire series, from what I've experienced, is at its heart a game which ignores the. Abstruseness of morality. That is a word, yes. Abstruseness. It was made to be a dungeon crawler, where you're an adventurer after fame, riches, and goodness. Evil has clear and irrevocably defined lines. Now, the rule system has, at various points, attempted to cover morality angles, because, hey, you know, that can tie into the motivation behind why heroes and villains do what they do. But it's never been a strong point of the system, because it wasn't meant to be. D&D &D is a heroic rule set, and the alignment system is ill-equipped to handle uh, moral quandaries. If you want shades of gray play Warhammer Fantasy roleplay. That being said, I'm partial towards neutral good and lawful evil in equal measures. It's kind of a dead heat. It depends upon my mood and the character I'm playing. Uh, I've, I've gravitated towards a lot, those alignments more than any other, I'd say. Um, the rest, though, uh, you can throw them under the bus. <laughs> Except for chaotic neutral. You can crucify that motherfucker. I don't have patience for Chaotic Neutral. 
or for chaotic stupid, or for lawful stupid. <laughs> there's a reason why there's like so many fucking memes about duh in D and D alignments. Because there is a bunch of duh in D and D alignments. Now that you have been edified even further, question forty four comes to you from uh, by Kerbal Rocketry, who asks. If you could be any animal, what color would you be? Black. The color of my soul. That was efficiently stupid, I think. Uh, question 45, my answer. Not exactly the query, although it's a nice curveball. Like, if you could be any animal, what color would you be? Not like what actual animal you would be. Uh, a nice, interesting curveball. <laughs> Speaking of curveballs... <laughs> question 45... Daxter is number one asks, "You're trapped by a avalanche, and a news helicopter goes over. You can signal it, but you will be raped by a silverback gorilla on live TV for three hours, or you can cut off your penis, p e a n u s, and escape. What do you do?" Let me gather my thoughts here. Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohame said, It's an animal trick to cut off a limb to escape pain. Instead, you would endure like a rational human being while looking for a third option. One that would actually be indicative of a creature with intelligence. So, that's what I'm going to do. For instance... I can ignore the fact that I got trapped in an avalanche. Maybe I'm vacationing in a snowy region. And the news helicopter, I suppose, seems plausible. You know, scoping out, you know, the effects of the avalanche. But a silverback gorilla hanging out nearby that access me? Forgive my ignorance, but I thought, like, the gorillas were, like, tend to be relegate, relegated to, like, certain regions of Africa. And I didn't think those were, like, snowy regions at all. I, I guess, you know, you can transport a gorilla pretty much anywhere, but I thought that was, like, their natural habitat. You know, again, that's not my expertise, so you'll have to forgive my ignorance there. You know, maybe you wouldn't edify me. That's what I thought, so... I, I didn't know gorillas hung out in snowy areas. I, or maybe this is some kind of sick game show. The news helicopter's actually playing a part, you know. That's what will be recorded on live TV. You know, it's a fucking game. I mean, I'm not doubting the animal's strength, and maybe he or she, you know, since gorillas do have sexes attached to them, just happened to wander along sometime after the avalanche occurred, like, dum da dum looking for dum da dum whatever. I don't know what gorillas do. I don't even know where they live, apparently. <laughs> but th this is where the other thing comes into play. I mean, the only way to escape this avalanche, according to the setup of this query, is for me to cut off my penis, leading me to believe that this unobtrusive appendage on a rather large body is somehow the only thing that got stuck in a giant mass of snow, ice, and rocks. What was I doing? Sexually engaging with a snowdrift? An arm or a leg? Sure, there's actually a story several years ago. I think it was like a guy who uh, got his arm cut, and, you know, he was like facing like an avalanche or something, or it was like after it, and he was going to die. He was like, fuck this shit, and he cut off his arm so that he could escape and live. You know, yeah. That's like a big aspect of your body there. It's extended from the body core. That's understandable. But a soft organ tucked very close to the rest of the body mass? Ah, you just crossed the fiction. Everything else. Okay, I was making excuses for that, but this, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> that was too big of a curveball. I've struck out. I can't follow you there. Nope. Question 46. Comes from Trashy Bagels, who asks, What's the deal with you and Variax? Uh, no deal? <laughs> That was my initial reaction. However, for you, I did a bit of homework. I actually pitched your question to Variax like four hours ago. It's almost six in the morning now. Somewhere around there. And uh, here's how that went. As far as I knew, you and I are internet acquaintances, but I figured I'd ask you just to make sure. 
Oh, well. Well, the thing is, I, I love you. Oh, <laughs> well, I suppose that's been unrequited for quite a while then, huh? Yeah, so, so I never mentioned. So, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's the deal. What's the deal? <laughs> like in Seinfeld. There, you, you, uh, you have now been edified. That's the word of the day, apparently. Edify. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Interesting. Question 47 from Devin Bradley asks, Since you like Chinese history, have you thought about playing any of the, of the Dynasty Warriors? I actually own one, Dynasty Warriors 5, but the, uh, the DW games aren't really my style. If you're looking to see series on those, then check out Bobo the Vulture and Mysterious JG. They do a lot of Chinese history stuff, too, and Bobo does other Koei games as well. Actually, so does JG, for that matter. you doing Romance of the Three Kingdoms stuff. He, um, he did a playthrough of 11, and uh, got a playthrough of 10, too. Now playing as Sun Se. Sun Se. No, not Su no, 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 no. Wrong. <laughs> he played as Zhou Yu. Sworn brother of Sun Se. He might as well have been the goddamn leader, considering the fact that the AI soon saw on beginner difficulty did fuck all. <laughs> I haven't finished that series yet. It's a work in progress. I'm working on it. Alright. Alright. Uh, question 48 comes from Flip45, who uh, made a roller coaster and roller coaster tycoon named after me. <laughs> oh. That was fun, and then I killed people. <laughs> he's like, he's scolding me. Grimeth, what are you doing? Uh, he asks, which game would you want to see a Let's Play of, but not want to do yourself? Daggerfall! <laughs> Good joke. Um, there's not one that comes to mind right now, but... Uh, there have been examples in the past. Metal Gear Solid 3, for instance. I've never even played that game before, but... uh. After watching a masterfully done playthrough, I I have zero intention of doing so. I'm just snake eater. He's fucking ascending that goddamn fucking ladder that takes forever. Oh man, I I don't have much experience with the uh, the Metal Gear Solid games anyway. You know, once you get into like the PlayStation ones, it just <laughs> I just know of the memes that originate from them. Like Snake's incredible ability to want to know how everything tastes and what have you, and Big Boss, Boss and CQC. And of course, there's Mary Gear uh, Santa. I think that's what it's called, and Santa Two. Those were interesting. Uh, yeah, Deus Ex: Human Revolution is another one. I've never played it myself, but I watched Griffin God do it. And I am 100% good on never experiencing that again. I have no interest in even remotely picking that up, because, wow, that... I I pretty much seen everything I needed to see. <laughs> like, yeah, no. <laughs> I think, and fun fact, I've actually gotten him to play Daggerfall, too. I've mentioned that before, definitely. Uh, <laughs> that's great. I suppose there is one game that occurs regularly, and that's Civilization V. I like to watch Mad Dijin play through it. Uh, he plays on game on Deity. You know, he's he's informed. He uh, participates in uh, the Polycast. That's like a bi-weekly type thing where they talk a lot about Civilization stuff. That's the big podcast uh, that they have there on Civ Fanatics. I've listened to several episodes throughout the years. It's interesting, because, you know... Not so much whenever they transition from Civilization 4 to Civilization 5, but I've definitely listened to some before. It's, I like the, you know, Civilization 4 stuff obviously interests me, even though I don't think it's, like, that great of a game. <laughs> no, I like to watch Managen play Civ 5. I've invested, I think Steam says, like, 175 hours into it myself. But there is no way I even remotely want to play Civilization V now. Right now, let alone record it. And I... That might be the closest thing to a sure bet when I say 
No, not happening. Are you kidding me? It's the most disappointing game I've ever played. And I said as much in the Q&A video last year. It still holds true. I, I don't think I could go five minutes without getting so annoyed. And I would just go off into a rant. And it would just be a, a, a Civilization Five video where I didn't play anything and just went off on super tangents. And it would be like, let's not get on with it or some crap like that. Good times for everyone. Okay, question 49. Bane of Cree asks, Well, what is your favorite fantasy setting? I reckon it's some sort of pseudo-medieval period. Perhaps touching at the Renaissance. I'm not much interested in futuristic settings or even modern ones. What I am noticing here, I'm writing these timestamps. So I'm going to splice those two audio clips later on together. These timestamps aren't 100% accurate. I, I did stop that last video at like 120, 122. I, I wrote down the timestamps so I can just add all those minutes. I'm talking to myself because I'm such a professional right now. The process of frying up bacon. <laughs> wow, for not for not having as many questions, I spent a lot more time answering each individual question. I, I only spent like uh, one hour, 58 minutes, and 30 seconds or some crap on the uh, the damn uh, the video last year. I guess this is just higher quality bacon since fewer questions were asked. <laughs> Whatever. I actually did get a new question <laughs> from Variex <laughs> between uh, the first part and the second part. Just technically the deadline did not pass. Uh, Alright. <laughs> yeah, Bane Increase. So stuff, you know, like the, the, the Dungeons and Dragons settings, and I do like the WFRP one too. I do like those eras. The futuristic shit, I just... So many mechanics to that. Like magic, you can explain it away with like a wizard did it, but all those high-end laser photons, fucking magical antimatter beams and what have you. It's just when you try to explain things with science instead of just uh, the the clutch a wizard did it. Thing, things just not only is it clutch, but it's cliche. But it totally works. Things just go awry. Things just go awry. All right. Question fifty uh, was brought to you by Dirk. <laughs> D-I-R-G-O-G-H-O-S-T who asks, describe what Jeff looks like in graphic detail. <laughs> That's not a question, but even if it were, it's not a question I can answer. How should I know? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you guys got as much information as I do what with all like the webcam videos he's uploaded and the moments where he might have shown his face on a live stream. I, I don't know him in real life and I don't webcam cybersex with him. The best I can do for you is that he has a light complexion and he has less facial hair than I do. Awesome, right. <laughs> Question 51. Stock Hanovites Hanovitz. He asks, What do they call a quarter pounder with cheese in Paris? Oh, word on the street is that it's called a royale with cheese. But my source may be suspect. Question 52. Basshole, Basshole, asks, What was your favorite spelling of Voldemort from My Immortal, which, uh, for those of you not in the know, was a, uh, Revocane had me read out a, uh, <laughs> absolutely wonderful fan fiction for him as part of Grimace Soundbites. And I did that, and he uploaded it to his YouTube channel. And, uh, <laughs> the, the spelling of many things, including Voldemort's name, alt, uh, it, it, it just fluctuated greatly throughout the course of the chapters, and, uh... My favorite one's gotta be Voldemint. V-O-L-D-E-M-I-N-T. It's not even fucking Voldemort? Voldemint? I mean, there was others, like... Volksamort and Volremort, and... You know, it's kinda like the fucking end of the word! <laughs> what are you not noticing? Voldemort? 
Vold mint. Mint. Fucking. <laughs> There's like voxel rot and <laughs> all sorts of other shit. It's like, ah! Like, it's like, it's like one of the words, like, how can you fuck up that word? Like, all those other words that you're not that familiar with, that's cool, but if you're so into Harry Potter and you gotta repeat the word so many times, how is that not being repeated properly? Or at least with, or at least in a typographical error that makes more sense than transitioning from Voldemort to Voldemort. I'm just fucking saying. Um... Question 53 was brought to you by Beepsy, who asks, I noticed that when I was younger, uh, my gaming habits were not as refined as they are now. Stupid corn chip. <clears throat> In particular, I spent too much time playing bad games, and also managed to let some of the jewels slip by entirely. Were there any bad games you remember spending an inordinate amount of time? Spending an inordinate amount of time? God damn it. An inordinate. An inordinate? <laughs> Voldemort. An inordinate amount of time on, or any golden classic games that pass you by. Um, now that I'm busy, uh, I finished doing a Porky Pig. There was one game, a browser game, back in 06 and 07. I won't say the name of it out of politeness. I, I think it still exists. But I was attached to it. Uh, got initially hooked in, did a real-life friends playing it, then it became the sunk cost fallacy. I may or may not have spent real-life money on it in addition to my time. To be fair, the game wasn't all bad, but that's really from one person I met for the game and not the actual game itself. And it's worth noting... She was actually the one who sent me the happy birthday text message. <laughs> so actually, I don't regret the entire experience, and I wouldn't take it back. But I've made better decisions in my life. Mistakes may or may not have been made. As for the second part of your question, uh, total annihilation. And that's all that comes to mind right now. I'm sure there was something else, but it's not important enough that I can think of it. Oh. Question 54. Uh... <clears throat> Gas Stormer asks, "Have you Gath? Gas Stormer asks, have you ever heard of or played Westwood's Knox? Heard of it? Yeah, uh, played it. Nah. Uh, you don't even remember it. I know Westwood. I know. I heard of the name Knox, the role-playing game." I can't think of anything beyond that. Maybe that's another game that passed me by. There you go. <laughs> Question 55. Larian the Mage, hey Larian, asks, What is your first memory ever? Pain. Ineffable. Insufferable. Unfathomable. Pain. Question 56. A shrot... Flint the Bold? I... I'm sorry. <laughs> Shh. Rot. Flint. D? The Bold? Asks. <laughs> yes, if I keep sounding it, it'll totally work. <laughs> sorry. I know you play D&D 3.5. Have you heard of Pathfinder, often called D&D 3.75, which improves on the 3.5 system? Yeah. I've never played Pathfinder myself. It came out around the time my core of gaming friends had dispersed to start their new lives. But I have definitely heard of it. Uh, I might end up playing it sometime or another. They still continue to work and do crap on it, too, I think. Just, you know. <laughs> Not something that particularly drives me right now. I'm doing a D&D 3.5, and that's all I need to do right now. 
I have heard mostly positive feedback from the Pathfinder system. A bit negative. It just came at a time where... If it came out a year sooner, I might have ended up playing something involving it, but just came out the wrong time. Question 57 comes to you from Paul Ravensfield, who asks, Do you believe the color of dice affects a person's internal feeling of luck versus their dice color and size 2? Nah. I'm uh, not that superstitious. I suppose it's theoretically possible, but... I don't think it's a sweeping generalization. I definitely think it's it's the exception rather than the norm. Question 58. Dobman01 asks, uh, Will you do another raffle play with J2 again? Preferably a a Paradox Grand Strategy game. Perhaps. I'm I'm pretty sure uh, he and I remain... uh, we're stagnant on the fact that uh, I haven't picked up Crusader Kings 2 since uh, that one event happened. I don't think he has either. We both on Intel that game. <laughs> it might happen, but there's nothing in the cards right now. And that could change, but eh, we'll see. We might play Dungeon Defenders. I think that's a game he bought that he hasn't played at all. One of many, like dozens. And there's a Steam Autumn sale going on, and he might be like, Oh god, I gotta buy more games! But I haven't spoken with him. Uh, well, in a while. Uh, question 59. Ire of Silverpine asks... feels if I said that name already. Eh. <laughs> Maybe I have. He actually gets, the, gets away with uh, me asking multiple questions. Well, looking up immediately upward. No? Eh. Ire of Silverpine asks, Why haven't you done a Dwarf Fortress LGWI? I don't like Dwarf Fortress, and I have no interest in playing it, let alone recording it. There is an answer I gave in the opening minutes of my Q&A video last year, which goes into depth on the topic. Uh, if you're interested in recycled bacon, uh, then I would suggest you take a gander. Uh, I pretty much speak how I feel about the game there. I think that does a good job. And of course, you know, people agree with that, people disagree with that. Some folks got angry about it, you know. A few people, I you know one person particularly, he, like, skipped that section because he didn't want that to change. Like, hollowed error, I think, who didn't want me to, didn't want his view of me to change based upon that or something. Eh, whatever. It is what it is. But, yeah. You, you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not going to see one from me. Dwarf Fortress. Ever. Maybe that's the one, sure bet. Never, ever. <laughs> Never. Now, Starzu. Starzu is a hell of a lot. Especially since Toady1 actually PM'd me himself a few weeks back. Uh, talking to me about Starzu. <laughs> that got me thinking about Starzu again. Uh, it could happen. It could happen. Question 60. Uh, Blue Moo 666 asks, uh, Your favorite UU... A uh, unique unit from Civilization 4. I have to go with NES Fast Worker. No matter what strategy you're pursuing or your preferred playstyle, workers will be involved. And there is a huge difference between two movement and three. The advantage is smaller on slower gain speeds, but I almost always play in standard. Now, y- you know, while it's my favorite, I, I wouldn't particularly argue that it's the best one. I mean, it's certainly available... The uh, the better unique units are available earlier in the game, you know, the late because that's when you can utilize them to gain a turn advantage. You know, it's just like the unique buildings. The earlier ones are going to be better. Like Inca's Terrace, of course, is glorious because it's a granary that uh, gives you plus two culture, which is wonderful. Um, it's yeah, certainly not a problem with that at all. Uh, but, uh, in terms of, like, best unit, India's Fast Worker, I think, is in contention. But uh, the, the plus one movement wouldn't help you so much as using Inca's Quetcha. On the higher difficulty levels, a warrior that starts with combat one and gets a plus 100% bonus against archers. That's your barbarian defense right there, and that's your offense. Even on deity, 
you can quench or rush someone and take them out. Or you can take out their capital and let the AI you kind of cripple continue to make more cities for you that you can take later. That is your offense. Because on the higher difficulties, they're going to start with archery, and they'll have entirely archers until they, like, hook up metal and shit. Don't let them hook up metal, it's a bad idea. I mean, like, something like that, or, you know, Egypt's war chariot. A chariot with five strength. You know, that difference between four and five allows it to plow through enemy defending units much, much easier. Uh, that extra, you I mean, you know, at a time where, you know, strengths are so close together, each little point of strength matters so much. Those are two. The Persian Immortal as well. That, that's also a very good one. Uh, Roman Praetorian, I think, gets overrated. Aggressive axes are pretty competitive against that. You know, uh, 7.5 strength versus 8. The axes are cheaper. And, of course, if you have a barracks, too, you can stick with the promotions. And, obviously, if you fortify the axes in the city as well, the Praetorians with their 8 strength, it's just, I mean, it's, I don't think it's a bad unit. It's a fucking swordsman with 8 strength instead of 6. I think it's a bad unit. I just think it gets a lot of you know, props when it shouldn't. <laughs> but my favorite one, just, you know, the, the peaceful India's one. That skirmisher from the Malinese is also pretty sweet, too. You can do some skirmisher rushes or choke down people, but... Eh. Uh, moving right along here. We're getting close to the finish line. <laughs> and I've definitely gone over last year's time. I, I, I've just been ranting more. Um, uh, no, no, fuck that name. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was an unfiltered initial reaction for me. Uh, Nauru Norik. Nauru Norik? Cairo, I was just, nur, now, one. I was trying to, like, reverse it, see if maybe that made sense. Uh, Nauru Norik asks, I'll check the timestamp. Do bottled children's tears age well like wine, or are they best enjoyed after a quick chilling with friends? The answer to that question, it might not seem like one, but it's a good answer. Yes. Question 62. Doom Knight 66 asks, asks is the any chance of getting uh, Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen... Uh, LGWI. I, I don't think so. Even if I had the interest required to record myself playing it, the game has been so well documented, in my opinion, of the series. Not that I've really gone after watching other series, because I don't have that much interest in the game. But I know there's been a lot of playlists of it. Uh, I, I don't think I, I, would ha I wouldn't be bringing anything new to the table. I have no special insight on the game, or real love of it. I've, I've just played it before. That's it. Question 63 comes from Good Mage 1991 who asks, What is your current profession? Uh, I, um, don't actually know what my official job title is, and I'm not sure whether my boss has one for me. I don't know. I work at a museum. I went with a backcountry exhibit depicting how settlers lived here back in the late 1600s and early 1700s. I spend time out there. I get in costume. You know, see little tour children. They come through. I show them through various places. I can work a loom house. You know, carved cotton and wool in the thread. Manipulate it through a spinning wheel. Use a hand loom. I can weave uh, reed baskets. You know, I can make, like, candles, like soap... I, uh, I cook out there. I can do a little bit of carving. The only thing I really can't use out there is the blacksmith shop. Um, I also spend time going through genealogical records, doing some other stuff for late pertaining to the museum, and historical shit, fun stuff like that. But a current, like, actual job title for you to sink your teeth into. I don't really have that. Question number 64. Uh, Xylo587, uh, this is a, it asks as a backup question, what is a fuckton in metric units? 
Oh, uh, I wanted to leave profanity out of this, and of course, I obviously have it. Especially as I got more and more tired and more and more prone to swearing. Swearing, but I just wanna just wanna note right now. I guess I'll take the time. Lord, I apologize. The usage of profanity is indicative of an uncouth, uneducated background, and its user sullies the ears of all others. Please forgive me for all of the naughty things I say. Okay, thanks, little bye. Slash sarcasm. I don't know the answer to your question, Zylo, because there's no conversion chart between fictitious phrases, Grimmeth uses, and uh, actual things. <laughs> Sorry. It is what it is. Uh, question 65 comes to us from uh, Fatso8675309. I got your number. Uh, he asks, If you could fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck, which would it be? I, I've seen this one before. And I think the answer is obvious. I'd rather fight a single foe than be trampled under 400 tiny hooves. <laughs> it's, just like, it's like an army of, of 100 duck-sized horses. I mean, the mass of that is far greater than just one duck size, uh, one horse-sized duck. It's easier to avoid one than it is to avoid 100. Question 66 comes from Mario Man 2161 I'm probably going to cop out on this question. Like a bitch. He asks, uh, What do you think about the stupid 2012 end-of-the-world theory? Uh, ask me that question again in 30 days. <laughs> we'll know more then. We'll, you'll see for yourself, in fact. You probably won't need to re-ask me that question. <laughs> I'm just saying, in the entire possibility of human history, there is a chance I could be wrong on things. I admit this every day. It's like the same thing with how I accept I could die. At any, I could die while recording this, and you'll never hear it. It could happen. I accept that. It's part of my contract with life. It's, I mean, it, it, there's no point in being afraid of death, because death is inescapable for all of us. It's the same thing, I mean, you know, if an end of the world catastrophe is going to happen, then I, I guess we're, we're pretty close now. It's either it fucking happens, or we can stop fucking talking about it happening, and we can move on to the next world-shattering catastrophe. Many people have predicted the... Uh, there's just so much more detail back this, and what the minds really... And I fucking don't care. I'm too apathetic. If it happens, it happens. I don't care. Moving right along. Nostradamus predicted this. You should, you should consult him, not me. I'm an oracle, but I have a lot of limitations here. Um, question 67, as a motorboat, comes to us from Callum Nartia, who, Narita, who asks, what is your favorite die? Probably my 1D100, because it's so entertaining to roll. <laughs> Just like, wee, it's like a golf ball. In addition, it has seen the least use of all my dice, so it has had fewer opportunities to betray me. Unlike the D4s and the D6s and the 8s and the 10s and the 12s and especially the 20s. Those fucking D20s, man. So, uh, Kobo rolls a 1 to attack. He actually trips and stabs himself with a spear and dies. How did he stab himself with his own spear? Sometimes God just hates you. God's a dick. <laughs> Sometimes God's a dick. <laughs> There's no better answer. God's a dick. Question 68 comes to you from Nicholas9822, who asks, Would you do anything more with Jeff other than Nintendo? Like, I don't know, say, like, Worms Revolution as an example? It's possible. Jeff and I have discussed such activities in the past outside of console games. I wouldn't count on it if I were you. Uh, but it could happen. Question 69 is from... Waffle Changers, 
who asks, what are your opinions on who fired the first shot at the Battle of Lexington? Uh, so many conflicting theories, so many conflicting eyewitness accounts, so many young men charged with them all with so many other factors, it's hard to say. Um, my best guess is that one of the colonists did it, either a militia man or some other citizen. I think the British soldiers there were trained enough that they would not have begun firing without that. Of course, once, once well, after the shot happened, it was <laughs> no, no, no holds barred. Oh man, I'm too tired right now. The process. <laughs> I don't even need to eat turkey. I'm tired. Goodness. Uh, so yeah, that's my best guess. I, I think uh, a colonist did it. It might not have been someone directly on that field there in confrontation. But I think uh, it might have been Samuel Adams, since he was trying to instigate shit all the time. You know, for freedom and what have you, that bastard. I wouldn't put it past him. Question number 70 comes to you from Blurb808, who asks, Have you ever wanted to give up Let's Playing? Um, I'm still doing the hobby, albeit... Uh, tad sporadically nowadays, so I'd say no. If I really wanted to not do this anymore, then I, I wouldn't, plain and simple. And if I ever wanted to do it again, then I would pick it back up. I mean, I, I don't like give it up. It's not like, yeah, like I'm done with it forever, forever. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know. I, I might just be bickering and dithering over the choice of words they were to give up. It has like a negative connotation attached to it. Uh, there's that. Um, question 71 comes from D. Cutian. Cut. D. D. Q. T. Shit. D. C. U. T. E. A. N. Sorry. <laughs> Who asks. Have you ever, or do you still actively GM tabletop RPGs? I most certainly have. That has been my primary, primary function. But I am not overseeing anything right now. I'm not exactly looking 100% to oversee anything either. That could be possible, though. Not enough time in the day. I haven't even played Dungeon Defenders in the past 24 hours. It's bullshit. Question 72... Comes from Jason Dwyer, who asks, Do you ever miss Daily Motion? Uh, for those of you who do not know, once upon a time, I used to upload my videos to Daily Motion. And those, that was my initial uh, channel. Uh, whenever I started this hobby, I was uploading my Liberal Crime Squad videos there. I uploaded uh, and just started my Star Zoo series there, and I also uploaded a Kosovo Carnage. And I gave my thoughts on, like, the Liberal Crime Squad, like, some sort of alpha or whatever. Um, I thought about it a few times, particularly after YouTube makes a serious change, but I don't miss it. Uh, if memory serves, I uh, used uh, Daily Motion because I liked the increased video length size. And I switched off. There were, like, complaints of people not being able to watch the videos there or something like that. I don't remember fully. It's been too long, and I'm tired right now. Um, there were reasons why I shifted, and I, I had personal dislikes with it. Uh, you know, I, I like the increased video length size, which is why I use Daily Motion. I didn't think I'd be, like, turning this like a fucking, you know, huge goddamn let's get on with it thing. I just wanted to share my love of Liberal Crime Squad and how easy the damn game was if you just murdered everyone. YouTube certainly took care of that increased video length size thing, though, and, uh... So many people continue to use, uh, YouTube that, eh, I guess it'll work. Maybe a blip TV will happen one day, but I don't miss Daily Motion, no. Uh, question 73 comes from... My name is 214365, who asks... Uh, let me get down the timestamp here. This shit's complicated. <laughs> who asks, Who do you feel 
would win in a free-for-all fight to the death. You, Plump, Jeff, Revocane, SKS, or Griffigon. This is, of course, taken into account estimated weight, height, strength, pain threshold, sportsmanship, morality, and body fat percentage, and Civil War knowledge. Personal bias is permitted as well. I... Uh... I think PHP's got the best chance. Uh, SKS and I would immediately lock ourselves into the to a duel, the likes of which are only seen in lecture halls across America, and it would end with physical violence. Well, I think I could take the balding, anti-progressive uh, Kentuckian. Griffin God would handicap me, because I have belittled him way too much for him not to come after me personally. So, this 2v1 matchup, I mean, I'm good, but I'm not that good, come on. Would, it would end in death for all three of us. <laughs> and so, we're out of the picture. As for the others, well, there's no way Revocane would go after Plump, out of respect. So, Revocane and Jeff would have to square off, and I think Plump's got enough of a dark side. There's, there's, some, there's some evil potential in him that uh, he'd pick them both off while they were weakened and declare himself the winner. Besides, I would venture so far to say that, you know, Plump, you know, he works out in a country town, and, you know, he works with animals on a farm. You know, I, I, I think he, I would wager he's in the best physical shape of all of us. That being said, don't bet against Grimmeth. I've thought for years that my rage, given physical substance, could move mountains. The lives of five people would not be beyond me to take. Comes down to survival. We could make try to make our own third option and fight the man, or I could kill all of you. <laughs> uh, both of those sound like good options. <laughs> Righto. Uh, question seventy four comes from Mr. Matt Allen, who asks. Do you feel obligated to people who donate money or games to you, or do you just blow them off if they ask any sort of request? Uh, what I do is a hobby. What someone decides to do in response to my hobby sounds like a personal problem to me. There's the rewarding the rewarders opportunity I offered a few months ago, out of generosity, to folks who, you know, freely donated, you know, not expecting anything. They just did it. That's cool for them. Sounds like a personal problem. But they decided to do it, stupidly and foolishly. And I was like, tell you what. You didn't request a game. I'll put it on my list. I'll get around to playing it. Let's see what happens. And that's been happening. And I still got some games left on that. And I'll get to those. Given time. <laughs> but beyond that, no. I mean... Fucking... <laughs> It's not like I'm asking for money. This is not my profession. I'm not obligated to do a job here. It's something I do for my personal entertainment. Something you participate in for your personal entertainment. If you're stupid enough to give me your money, and then expect that you can get something out of it, <laughs> well, then you didn't deserve to have that money in the first goddamn place, now did you? <laughs> it's like, uh, someone, um in my practical law class in high school. Uh, as a guy named Christian, you know, he would share his entertaining theories and amusements. He was a, he was a troublesome kid, but uh, this class was pretty laid back and he was able to, you know, talk a bit and have good times, you know. He had a, you know, he'd talk about things like a series like newspaper ads, like Christian's charity fund and shit like that. Cuz you know his name was Christian. You know, it might be a bit of a misrepresentation. So many people donate to, like, religious shit anyway, you know, blindly and freely. You know, his name's Christian, he might be able to take some advantage out of that. Maybe he has in life, or maybe he's dead. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> Again, no no middle option, either or, but there is that. Uh, question 75. Uh, Emma Novi asks, as a backup question... Do, do, do. Yes, that, yes. <laughs> what 
Uh, are there any other games you would love to get on with, but lack the time, courage, technology, or whatever to do? Yes, there are. I can't say which, though, because that would be telling. And heaven forbid I give away any spoilers for something that may or may not occur as circumstances change. I mean, you know, I, I say that something, I can't do it, and then I'm later able to do it, and then I do it, and then people are like, you couldn't do this. Or I say I'll never do something, and then I end up doing it. People will throw that back in my face. Like, you're accusing me of being a flip-flopper. <laughs> that's, a, that's a popular political term, flip-flopping. A waffler. I like to cultivate an aura of mystery that allows me to come across as a douchebag, okay? <laughs> Is it working? Question 76 comes from Das Master Shenanigans, who wants to know, would a Klingon challenge be better if bees translated into bacon? All I'm going to say that is is that uh, if Captain Kavok told me to experience bacon, <laughs> I probably wouldn't stop his evil plan. Just throw that out there. <laughs> and I don't think Inferno would either. Or Squee. Or Kriana. Or Variax. Nah, they don't know him that well, though. They might. I wouldn't let him. I'd, I'd place them in a stasis field. Of bacon. <laughs> Question 77, uh, Ring Hloth, uh, Ring H. Loth. Uh, he wants to know, when is more planet stronghold? Ha 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 ha. Good joke. And finally, a uh, question that actually popped up courtesy of Variax. Uh, building off that earlier question where I actually asked for his input, you know, and he mentioned his love for me. Uh... <laughs> uh, Variax asks, what do you say to you and I eloping together? We could run away to our own little cabin in the woods where we could pick flowers and talk to squirrels before baking chestnuts on an open fire and making bubbles with dishwasher liquid. It could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was pretty sure you already had a girlfriend, but I guess if you're in the market and you're interested, a man with an awesome beard with a lot of dice <laughs> that bubbles with dishwasher liquid, man. Oh my goodness. That cute little smiley face. We might be able to make some magic happen, man. You, you, you. You'll just have to give me the details later. Maybe your love won't be so unrequited. <laughs> Alright, I did a quick check on the internet. No other queries for me to answer, so all future queries, fuck all of you. We're done! I'm done frying up bacon. Show's over. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, it's 6.40 in the morning. <laughs> Early morning bacon. <laughs> uh, my brother and his wife are coming over in a few hours just for a little bit. I'm just gonna give well wishes. I have to stay up until then so I can go to sleep. Fuck potato soup. Uh, hope you all enjoyed this year of bacon. 78 questions that were answered. A lot of detail. A lot of rants. Not a lot of awkward swallowing sounds and uh, corn chip getting caught in throat. Oh, man. I might release these in two parts, uh, given their total length. I might actually be generous like that. <laughs> or I might just feel too lazy and not want to splice them together and have to make another set of time stamps. <laughs> I am now strongly considering this option. Might make this two videos instead of one. That sounds pretty good to me. Can I ramble on any further? Is there anything else I want to cover? No? Good. I uh, hope you all enjoy your little turkey day gobble gobble. Uh, happy birthday of bacon. Bacon for everyone. Hey, everyone got a slice. 
I like to think it was a big slice. Some slices were bigger than others. The political rant one that that was uh that was pretty lengthy there. <laughs> you all know whenever you ask me these questions that I get to go off on tangents like this. That's right. And uh, for the four people who are still watching, good job. For the four people, actually the nineteen people who are still watching, fifteen of you who just skipped the end. Uh, I'm glad you all have hung out with me uh, for. Two and a half years through uh, rough times and pleasant ones, through uh, all sorts of peculiarities. Uh, I have, I'm glad I get to share uh, random moments from certain games with all of you. I, I apparently decided to delve into like a heartwarming moment. It's a rather fun hobby I enjoy, and uh, so long as it remains fun for me, it's something that I will continue to do. And, uh, despite the fact that I come across as an arrogant asshole and a douchebag, you know, I do care about people. People do matter. Uh, and I try to, uh, enrich and better their lives, uh, through my actions in life. So, uh, I might forget about your personal messages. I might, uh, contemplate on whether I think you're a dumbass or not. <laughs> Whenever you ask me stupid questions that you could easily answer by Googling them. Yeah things matter, and uh, this month didn't cu didn't bustle with activity as much as I thought it would, because I got hooked on Dungeon Defenders again. Uh, I will force myself viscerally off of that. I got Shining Force to do, and of course, uh, I was having some recording problems with uh, the next game on the list that I was going to do. I could, just, I could just skip over that, I suppose. Get on with another one. I got a lot of games to do. It doesn't particularly matter which order I do them, as long as I do them. As that was an offer, a promise made from me to you. And those matter. I hope we can get on with it together, though, in the future. And if you decide to get on with it with someone else, I, I won't accuse you of cheating on me. It's okay. I have Variax. <laughs> Gay! Go eat your fucking bacon now. Just leave me alone. The grease is so bad. Oh, God. Let's go, man. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Talk to you later. Grim is out. Get on with it. End the goddamn video. That, that let's get on with the thing. It will never be achieved, guys. Ever. <laughs>